freaking eyeliner everywhere, blood on my face. I have had the absolute worst night of my life. Most of you guys know that my brother died on the 17th and last night my son almost died too. So my 13 year old son Braylon is diagnosed with a genetic heart condition called prolonged QT3. This condition is pretty much where the electrical particles in the heart make the heart just start going like this and then the blood sits in there and doesn't know where to go, therefore causing the body to go into cardiac arrest when it goes into this state of rhythm, meaning that there's a lack of oxygen to the head and there's a lack of oxygen to the body. At 10.26 p.m. last night, we were sitting down watching a movie with my son when he collapsed and he passed out. Immediately, we were there, thank God. We picked him up, we lifted him up. We wanted to rush him over to the hospital, but I said, no, it looks really bad this time. Lay his body down on the ground and let me start doing CPR. I then call 911. I begin doing CPR chest compressions on my 13 year old kid, begging, pleading Jesus to bring him back to life. I check for a pulse, there's no pulse. I continue doing CPR, blood starts coming out of his mouth, blood starts coming out of his nose. He's just a whole pool of blood is just filling up the concrete as I'm just CPRing his lifeless body. I'm very, very appreciative of the response team. They got to my house within seven or eight minutes and they took over chest compressions and they shot my baby back to life. I'm really just making this video because I know a lot of you guys have been following along his heart journey since March when this something similar to this happened, but not nearly as bad. He is in critical condition right now. He is fighting for his life. I will probably look like this for the next five days, and that's okay, because nothing matters to me except for my kid. Hey guys, most of you guys know that Braylon is in the hospital right now. Um, I want to first and foremost say that if anybody is using any of our videos asking you for money, we would never ever do that. We're no. not. Um, it's somebody trying to do a scam or something. I've seen it briefly in a few comments on my post saying that we were asking for money and stuff like that and we would never. So if you see that, please report that. You guys should know 100% we would never ask you for anything other than your prayers and your support during this time right now. Uh, I kind of want to give you guys a brief rundown of what happened exactly and I hate that we are meeting under these circumstances again because I feel like I just had to make a sad video about my brother and unfortunately if you didn't see the news he did pass on December 17th. I did a tribute to him if you want to watch it. So I am to say the least a bit traumatized right now because I just watched my brother go through this but the circumstances are totally different. Um, so basically what happened, and I'm going to give you guys my timestamps that I can actually remember, yeah. is that Marco and I went to go see the Raiders versus Raiders, the 49ers. Yeah, Our 49. buddy had invited us out, so we went there and we were there all day, right? Then we came home and we started creating some content. I think I did like some fun video in a robe, whatever. So if you can imagine, I'm sitting here in my silk robe, my husband's sitting here in his satin, satin, whatever. We had our, you know, our if you can visualize it. We're sitting down in the living room with Braylon, Cannon, and Caden. And I'm not gonna play the clip because it's very traumatizing, but I did like have it from our ring camera devices so I could show the doctors and stuff. But at 10.26 p.m. Braylon passed out. He kind of just like tilted over and hit his head on the um, coffee table. But like, it wasn't But he was already arm. down. Like he was already on the ground watching television. So when he slumped over, we thought he was just tired and falling asleep. But no, he went like this and then he completely went backwards, fell. Before his head could even hit the ground, Marco immediately grabbed him up and we just started like, Braylon, Braylon, oh my God. A lot more hysterical than that. We were freaking the hell out because we knew he was going into cardiac arrest and he was going to die. Yeah, so we so, immediately got him out of the house because I didn't want Mark Cannon or Kaden to see their brother like that. Yeah, so, so traumatized. Because Marco was there, because last time Marco was actually in the... Um, last time Marco was on a meeting and I found Braylon, but he was more coherent. So this time it was not like that. This time... Marco was there, so I could immediately call 911. And I knew by the way of how Braylon actually looked that he needed 911. There was no way we were going to be able to, even if we got him out of the house in the car, it just was not. So no if way. you ever find anyone like that just completely passes out after running, after doing anything, goes unconscious, anything, do not try to take them to the hospital yourself. Lay their body flat on the ground 
and begin doing CPR. I don't care if you've never even done CPR before, just start pressing on their chest because initially what you're doing is you're causing the blood to continue to flow because the heart isn't doing this. So what you're doing when you're pushing down is you're pushing right on that heart and you're allowing that blood to flow right back to the heart, yes. right back to the lungs and the body. So what happened with Braylon was the, the heart had stopped for a while but nobody knew it because it's like silent. It doesn't give you any like pain or anything. No so or so the blood was just collecting in the heart, cooling, just big. It was just getting bigger and bigger until he finally fainted because it wasn't no oxygen going to his head or his legs. And so when, when we laid him down and we started doing the CPR, after about 60 seconds, blood started to come out of his mouth, out of his nose. So whenever I would go down to, you know, he bit my lip, he bit his lip, so there was more blood, but the blood was coming more because I would blow in to try to give him oxygen, but then like his nose was just coming out everywhere. So at this point, I was actually kind of nervous because I felt like I'm doing everything I can and he's, he's not here. I have blood all over my face. I have blood all over my hand, yeah, all over so. my satin robe. So needless to say, that's the most traumatizing part that felt like a movie. It was and so there was so traumatizing, a right? Even wifey had to stop, and then I got to go on. With the I couldn't CPR do it anymore. I literally and, thought we lost him. Yeah. And and I was just like, so in the middle, get this, in the middle of us doing CPR, we're on the phone with 911. The first thing that you need to do when you call 911 is give your address immediately. I think that's what saved his life as well because yes. I didn't get around to like screaming, crying. I just immediately said, this is my address. This is the name. This is the age. This is what's going on. He's dying. Help please help, please help, get here fast. And I just kept repeating the address, repeating his name, saying, please hurry. So when the blood started coming, I, I just thought it was kind of over, like we lost him. Um, and, and then the phone died. So then I ran back inside to go get Marco's phone and I kind of had like lost hope, yeah, but Marco she, came and I took kept, over the CPR kept and he kept CPR doing it. While she went and going to find my phone, so. Mm -hmm. just to make sure that he kept oxygen so his I, body. I was a nervous that maybe they didn't hear the address and maybe they weren't on the way and I and I knew we didn't have time so I ran back in the house to go get the phone to go call 911 again on Marco's phone so I did that I called 911 within guys 1026 he was passed out 1026 we got him over to the garage by 1027 we started CPR and by 1034 p.m. the paramedics were already at our house so I believe you have to give your address immediately anytime there's an emergency but we also prevented any lack of oxygen from going to Braylon's brain and Braylon's um, body so here's the other thing right so when you um, when your heart stops it's almost like if you think about you just pull the plug out of your computer and you don't like say restart or you don't say like shut down so you kind of just pull the plug and then you know your computer kind of has to reboot right so that's Braylon's body at this point. But what happened, sadly, was they rescued him on the way to the ambulance, but he started breathing again on his own after the CPR and the bag mask and the oxygen. So they pulled the tube out. Well, then he was laying there in the ER. There's like 15 people all around his room and they come pull me. They came and told me, I want to let you know your son's alive. We have a pulse. You saved his life you and your husband and you're doing such an amazing job mm. and I just need you to be calm while we do our thing so I'm like okay we're gonna just be calm while you do your thing well then she comes out she's like honey I'm sorry he's going into cardiac arrest again I need you to come here hold his foot and talk to him pretty much telling me to say my goodbyes to my kid at this point so I cry I run back I hold his foot I say Braylon, honey, come back. I said, come back in the name of Jesus. I said, you can do this, please. And he's right over there, so I don't want him to hear me. But I said, Jesus, I just started praying over everybody in there. I was lifting my hands up and I was just reaching, begging, saying, Jesus, please. Send your angels, guide these people's hands, and I'm by myself, and I have to tell my son goodbye. And so, um, all of a sudden they say, oh, we have a heartbeat. I just praise God. And um, 
I hurried up and intubated him again. Here what ended up happening was his lungs were full of so much blood and they took the tube out and um, it was too much on his heart so his heart stopped again. So um, anyways, he uh, he's good now. And they they got him stable enough that we could flight him over to center, um, the new hospital, where there's more better technology and pediatric cardiology things. A lot of babies come here that have like open heart surgery and stuff like that, so they're very specialized in this here. And um, when we got here, we weren't able to see him, and I was okay with that as long as he was alive. I don't need yes. to see him. Um, and so then we went and we stayed on this couch, this little couch, and we just like held each other all night. All night long. And then we woke up and we came to come see him in the morning. And the best thing, I mean, it hadn't even been 12 hours yet. And I knew that he didn't lack any oxygen to his brain because that's what had happened to my brother Joshua was he, he didn't have any oxygen to his brain for so long and it fried his brain and he became a vegetable and his kidneys stopped. I was thinking this thing was going to happen to my oh, baby. Hi. No. Did he wake up? Oh, okay. He's waking up again. He tries to sit up a lot. It's so great to know that he can move. Um, so he has the most phenomenal nurse and the most phenomenal team. Um, Marco's with him right now. can't necessarily remember where we're at. Day two was yesterday. No, day one was yesterday. Um, so pretty much when all that blood came out, a lot of it got into his lungs. A lot of it got to his head, which kept his brain oxygenized, but a lot of it got into his lungs. And so um, anybody that knows radiology or anything like that would know that if you look at an x-ray, if it's mostly white, that means that there's not a lot of black space of air like black means that there's air in there and white means that there's barely any and his lungs were full of white there was barely no air in there so he was essentially like drowning and suffocating in his blood but, um, they, that's what the ventilators for they made me aware that it was going to take like 48 hours before the body would reabsorb it back into the bloodstream and we've seen the chest x-ray today which is almost two days later almost like a little bit after 36 hours later and 
His chest x-ray looks so much better. So fast forward to what else happened. Um, he's pretty much just been trying to heal his lungs. He has a little mini pneumothorax, which is like a little pocket in there that they're not too concerned about because it's only like 17 millimeters and they're believing it's going to absorb back into the body. Um, Mark has been here by his side. I have not left except for today for about half hour. I needed to go take care of something at the bank. Um, and what else? He has on these compression things so that he doesn't get a blood clot on his legs. He has uh, this ice therapy, which he was able to get his body temperature to come down now. So he's not at 100 degrees Fahrenheit anymore. Now he's like 98-ish. So they haven't had to do that. Um, his heart, the echocardiogram yesterday was disastrous. They said his heart had suffered so much trauma that they were very worried and he was in critical condition. The cardiologist came back today and he said that his heart is healing exactly how it's supposed to. So I truly believe that the prayers, the continuous constant support and love and everybody just lifting him up has really allowed him to have a miracle so quickly. Um, we're still in re the recovery phase right now and we're just waiting for uh, his lungs to get strong enough. We wanted to take the tube out today but we're not gonna do that. They're gonna wait until tomorrow. We are requesting medical records from his biological father so that they have a better idea of what the heck is going on um, because they wanna prepare his body to go into surgery for a pacemaker, not a pacemaker. They only wanna do a defibrillator and I want them to put a pacemaker defibrillator, but they only wanna do one. And I've told you guys before, I wanted just the defibrillator and nobody effing listened to me and now my kid with a 50% chance of fatality, almost 50%. So, um, hoping that the medical records will be enough to convince the doctors to give my son adequate care and what he needs to survive. So, that is where we're at. Braylon has sat up multiple times. He has been able to say hello, not hello, but like, yeah, okay. So, here's the issue. The breathing tube is right against his vocal cords so it takes the vocal cords it takes the ability of him to speak out but once they take it out they say he'll be a little hoarse for a little bit <laughs> he was shivering really bad last night he was having really bad shivers because they're freezing him so that he wouldn't like um be too hot and then he not be able to recover so that's one thing with like heart patients they try to keep it very cool and calm in here um Braylon's holding up really well. He does not deserve this. He did nothing to deserve this. Um, no kid deserves this. And I'm just thankful to God that he's still here. He's still alive because I thought that I was holding him and he was just going to die in my arms and I was just going to have this bloody, disgusting vision in my head for the rest of my life of how I couldn't save my kid. But God, God turned everything around. That's where we're at. I don't think I've missed anything. His kidneys are functioning perfectly fine. His brain is amazing. Neurologically, he's testing amazing. It's not been enough days to do an MRI yet. Um, so they're thinking like three to five days before the MRI. Um, pulling the, the trach, the ventilator thing out tomorrow and hopefully his body will be healed up enough. Hopefully we'll get to talk to him tomorrow more, like not more than just shaking his head and opening his hands and stuff. So that's kind of where we're at with him. Sorry, this video is so long. I'm gonna close it out. I'm not gonna edit it. I'm just gonna post it like this. Um, I just, I don't have time. <laughs> but I love you guys. I wanted to keep you updated and I hope that you guys have the most amazing day. Stay safe. Please, if you don't know CPR, learn CPR because it can literally save a life. Even when you think that it's not working, it's 100% working. I love you guys. Stay safe. And thank you. Hey, it has been a few days since we have updated any of you guys like yes. in a very like a longer style video So mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to make this as quick as I can But um, follow up the shorter updates that are only like a minute or so because it's just been Hard I, I do feel like I want to share as much as I can with you guys because given the fact that that football player just went through cardiac arrest yes. there are a lot of people that deal with cardiac arrest and I just don't want to see anyone that watches our channel not know that there are ways to even prevent this from happening or like saving someone that's going through this so mm -hmm. um 
if you haven't watched the other video, please watch that because it will tell you like everything that happens start to finish and how you can save somebody's life literally if they go into cardiac arrest. So where we're at now is this is day five in the hospital. This is yeah, the day, day where Braylon went into surgery and he got his ICD placed. So a little bit of what happened from last night. Last night he was taken off of some of his meds that regulate his heart and um, he started having a little bit of arrhythmias in the evening. So we were still debating back and forth, pacemaker, ICD, both, which one, da da da, we couldn't figure it out. So doctor still is telling us that pacemaker is not necessary right now. All we need is a um, ICD. So he went in, he went through surgery. There were so many people praying for him. His lungs cleared up. He got extubated. He has no lines or anything in. He's doing really good. And his surgery went flawlessly. So Flawless. um, very little incisions, um, very minimal, minimally invasive. So it, it wasn't like an open heart surgery or anything like that. No, yeah, it was open very, heart, yeah. um, it's like outer, like the outer parts of your you know, like if you're a nurse, like, you know subcutaneous, intramuscular, it was a subcutaneous. So literally laying right underneath of this skin yeah. is where it goes. So it's it's less likely to catch an infection. It's less likely to infect the heart or be um, something that needs replaced very hard. Like a pacemaker mm -hmm. is something that they the way they explained is there's little wires with a screw at the end. And it's very easy to insert those screws. But because he's still growing, it would be really hard to remove those screws and pull them out without causing some kind of damage to that vein. And given yeah. that he has this heart condition for life, they don't want to exhaust all of their options so early. Um, so they just are doing the ICD right now and say in a few years, without this happening, happening to happen again, he can go in and get a very less invasive where it's not the wires, it's kind of like just the size of a bullet and it gets put in through the leg and comes right up to the back of the heart without ever having to screw it into the heart and risk that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we're at with the pacemaker versus ICD. So that's why the doctor decided to go with ICD. To my knowledge, there's no rhythm issues. There's only heart shocking issues yes only the, That's the electricity of the heart issues that's it yeah so um fast forward braylon went in about noon today he got out about an hour or two later they prepped him for like an hour before and then took him back the procedure only took like 30 45 minutes he's good his body handled the anesthesia really well he is resting he has very minimal pain and he mm -hmm. has pain meds that he can have if he needs them but he hasn't needed them so far which is incredible yes that's a blessing um, we're just very excited and happy to see him on his feet and we're just very happy that he is back with us yes and he's doing really well um only thing is he's going to be starting a new medication otherwise he would be able to go home tomorrow and come home with his brothers but unfortunately he has to start a new med so Fortunately, though, he's going to be monitored for the next few days to make sure that his heart responds to it correctly and that there aren't any like mess ups with it. So we're thinking maybe a Sunday, Monday yeah. type of discharge. Um, but also, I'm not too happy about this med so far because one, it's not in stock at the pharmacy just yet. And two, he has to take it three times a day versus one time a day. So it's a lot more for him to remember and a lot more chance of him to skip it and and something happen. So I'm a little just pray for me and my mom mind that I can settle it and that we can, you know, make sure that we're on top of this and that we're able to get it. But yeah, in the just... back of my mind, I think, oh, my God, what if we go into a freaking you know, epidemic and nobody can get their hands on any meds and then he doesn't get it. Like my mind goes there, you know what I mean? So um, as long as we can get the six month supply because it's a very, very rare medication. Most people don't have it on hand. It's something that most people don't even use. Um, so yeah, that's where I am with that. That's my only concerns right now is and making sure he gets his correct medication on time, all the time, and that there's no shortages and stuff like that because it's very serious. Like a matter of not having this medicine for a few doses can cause him to go into that heart thing, but luckily he has the shocker, but I don't want, and I know he doesn't want to get shocked want it all day. shock him, so, but uh, the doctor said 
in this lifetime he believed that it would be a cure right he says that yeah he told me that last year too and he in says that there lifetime. would be a cure something that could go in and genetically change the code of the electrical parts in there that make it do that so that's encouraging but when does that happen and when whatever we'll just pray and hope that it does but what is cool is the advanced pacemakers that they have now which are not those ones that go in they're very less invasive and stuff but we want to just get on here and let you guys know that Braylon's doing great he's recovering great yes. he has minimal pain he is talking he is eating he, he is well, playing video he hasn't games. ate yet since surgery but he's we're getting ready to feed him yeah he's been able to play video games he um cracking jokes he remembers he's ready a to lot. go home Yes, and he's ready to go home. So. He hates it here. I'm just going to be honest. He's He loves that they saved his life, and he loves that he's here, but he hates it here. He wants to go home. He just feels like he's in jail. He's trapped. This is the longest I've ever seen my kid sit yes. down in one stable area. He's ready to get up, walk around, run if he can. And um, all understood, because he's been laying in a bed for five days, and that's hard. So Yes, um, and another thing, you know, we encourage everybody that follow us, you know, teach his own but we want you to learn cpr just for you and your family and your house just in case yes. like we thought when we were doing it that it wasn't working like we were doing it and we thought it wasn't working but believe mm -hmm. it or not you're literally saving the person's life when you're doing that mm -hmm. so please learn cpr please 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 if there's anything i can ever ask you to do please learn cpr and if anybody ever collapses in front of you and you don't know what to do or they just like kind of go blank and you feel and there's no pulse just start cpr and get a hold of 911 as fast as you can and let them know your location um i just want to say thank you guys for your prayers if you haven't seen yes. on the shorts like how quickly you guys were able to pray braylon's lungs into full health like they're fully oxygenated now yes, which is just like so incredible so much with all of your prayers mm -hmm. uh it's just you know we're just so surgery, grateful for like, you guys they said his surgery went so beautifully that like like they were just so amazed at how well the surgery went. So I'm very thankful for that. And I truly do believe that like having a solid prayer base and I, I've said it before, I wanna keep the same energy all 2023. I wanna make sure that we are praying for you guys. So if you have prayer requests, please leave them down in the comments because I want this community to be a safe place where people feel like they feel are like heard. feel like home, family. And you feel you like know? people believe in, in your request and they actually care about you. And I, it, as much and as hard as you guys prayed for me, I want you to pray for our fellow friends and family members down in the comments because everybody deserves a chance at health and and whatever's going wrong in your life I believe that through the power of prayer you can really change the entire situation so my faith has been restored in humanity through you guys in the comments and through your engagements and your loving and kind words and it just like makes me it blows me away every time um, we're going to be relaxing with Braylon, helping him orient. I don't want to take too much time here. Um, I'm not going to edit this because I just want to throw it up to make sure that I'm telling you guys what's going on. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I feel you like so you much. guys have saved my son's life. I feel like the CPR that we did initially has saved my son's life. This amazing hospital staff has saved yes, the whole, our son's life. The whole, you know, science and the whole, you know, nursing staff, the incredible staff here. It's uh, like I'm smiling now. Like, yesterday was the happiest day of my life, but today's like the second happiest day because I know yes. that surgery went so well and he's doing so good. He's doing good. Uh, we will show, but we won't. Don't we're not going to show, show Braylon right now. Yes, no. Wait till he gets home. Wait till he, till he home. can tell you with himself. It's not our place as parents to put our kid yeah. on the internet looking like that. I feel like that is one place where we really messed up last time when Braylon was going through this was... I know Braylon didn't care and he didn't mind and he was so young, but like, we don't want to do that. Like, it's his privacy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we want to share as much as we feel comfortable that we feel can help you and encourage you guys in the community. Rapid response to the main lobby. Rapid response to the main lobby. Medical alert, Medical alert. Medical alert. Medical alert. Medical alert. Medical alert. Rapid response to the main lobby. Every time I hear that, I get so Yeah, nervous. man. We just happy. Uh, there are so many babies here. Please pray for all of the babies here. They need it. They need to go home. I've met some of you guys here. I've seen, I've heard some of your stories here. It's sad how many people are struggling with health issues in our country and um, kids especially. And so just 
pray for this unit, pray for the people in your country, in your community, um, lift each other up and always make sure that you're spending as much time as you can with your family because you never know when something can just change your entire world and when, when your last time will be to even speak to someone or if they'll make it out of something like this. So we love you guys. We hope that you have the best, what, new year? Best new, new year. year now. Best new year, best rest of the year. Uh, guys, this has been a quick journey, a quick, a quick journey and a quick turnaround. But uh, we love you guys. We appreciate every single last one of you for being here with us. And we're going to keep giving you guys updates on everything that's going on. We'll let you know how his body is and how yes. he's responding to this meds. And when we finally get home and he can see his brothers again and like it's been a really big toll on our family we're gonna mm -hmm. need therapy we need like to speak to people about this to like cope and and be around communities of people who understand us and it's been a it's been a journey so we'll definitely keep you guys updated on the process we are trying the best we can as parents to be the best parents we can be to our kids and to support them through this time so yeah we love you guys and we'll see we you, guys you guys soon we will update you, you soon, soon. We'll if there's anything significant we'll make sure yes then prayers work that fast. Alert, cancel, I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Guys, it has been a week. Yes, it's been a week. Uh, journey. Still going through the journey. Six days now. Yeah, this is the sixth days. day. I'm actually quite impressed at how much like supernatural has happened in the last six days because I wasn't sure how fast it was going to take or how long it was going to take for Braylon to start feeling better. Mm -hmm. um, but we are here on day six now. And with that being said, today is like a day where he's trying to recover a lot. So as far as like how everything goes the surgery went really well he's recovering really fast and really quickly uh yeah. it was really smooth it was only like a 30 45 minute surgery but he's eating and uh, uh -huh. he's okay. eating everything that he want to eat so it's just i'm happy about that you know that his stomach can hold and, mm -hmm. and and feel comfortable without even you know feeling queasy or anything like that he hasn't had any nausea no vomiting nothing like that um which is good the only issue that we ran into today is that he was negative leaders which means they had to almost dehydrate him in order to go into surgery yeah and they had to dehydrate him because if you have been following you've seen like how much secretions and blood went into his lungs so it like made him like he was suffocating so they wanted to make sure he was negative so that whenever they did surgery they didn't risk anything of him filling up with more fluids so they think this is their first hypothesis and the reason why i'm getting here is because he was supposed to start physical therapy today so that means they were supposed to get him up walk him around and get his mobility started again because mm -hmm. he's been laying for six days and when they went to get him up to do the physical therapy his heart rate jumped up to like almost 160 it was like 158 and so we're like oh maybe it was a fluke so we had him sit down and then it would go back down to 90 and then he would sit up again and then it would go right back up to 160 in like literally 10 seconds so it was really crazy um then the ekg guy got here super fast he monitored him while he was laying down flat and then whenever he stood up and sure enough it was 90 70 80 90 and then as soon as he stood up went right back to 158 160 so they're like okay i don't think i want to move him because if he gets to moving then it's going to go up even higher than 160 and a regular heartbeat is like 60 to 100 just for knowledge so way too high but he did start a new med but the doctor looked at the ekg and he said okay well maybe it's because he's dehydrated and that's yeah. what's doing it so then they ordered fluids so they boosted him some fluids and right now he's just letting that run for an hour and then they gave him some more fluids and he's drinking lots of water to see if he can stand up and do it again. Mm -hmm. But he just went to do something else very minimal in the bed and his heart rate went right back up to 130. So we're trying to figure out if it's out of nervousness, if it's out of excitement, if it is something related to the heart or what. That's just like where we're at right now with it yeah. because we can't send him home with a heart rate that high. That's just dangerous. And very. then God forbid his ICD goes off and shocks him because it wasn't controlled before he left. So that's kind of where we're at with that um hoping that once we get back in there and he has had his 
boluses that when he stands up his heart rate won't go so high um and i'll be interested to see what they think it is if that doesn't work yeah they coming back and test in how long babe they said it would be like an hour so okay. we're getting close but um the thing is is if he can pass that and everything we found his medication medication yes was i found on his medication hand at our local pharmacy yes, so we, we were had so to... thankful yes the lady told me to come back in three hours so i came back in three hours and then uh, another guy was working and then he said oh sorry sir this medicine is not in we have to order i was like no 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 waited. the lady already told me that it was three hours to wait so i waited three hours to come back and then another lady came and brought me the medicine so i was like whoo dodge a bullet yeah exactly because we need the medicine too before it can go home so yes. pretty much right now we're just waiting on orders to get him to be able to come back home because right now you know he has just the unstable heart rhythm and um making sure he has enough fluids so that's our next steps otherwise we're good to go home tomorrow which is beautiful the kids miss him so so much yes mark cannon's begging mark cannon like, is when like is Brandon Brandon you're coming the best brother ever if you've ever seen mark cannon he's just like such a sweetheart he's so funny he's like has braylon been laying in that bed for seven days yeah he's like he's so funny and but they have like this brotherly bond of communication the way yeah they they're always laughing at each other clowning Caden misses them you can just yeah. tell like when Caden we put him on facetime every day for a few hours and we let them talk and Caden like just lights up every single time he sees mm -hmm. Braylon and Braylon you can tell he's smiling and happy and stuff other than that Braylon's been playing Fortnite all day today on the Xbox um he hasn't he's had minimal pain since the surgery he hasn't had to take any of his hard pain meds and i'm like boy if you need these hard pain meds take them now yeah i think he'd be trying to just be tough guy i think he doesn't want to forget anything because yeah. he told us that he he really hasn't remembered anything up until yesterday like even when the tube came out that was like the first day and a half probably i'd say in the last day and a half is the first time he started actually remembering things and mm -hmm. people even some of the nurses that he was talking to he doesn't remember anymore the good news is is that braylon's memory is back intact but i think he's afraid to take any medication because he thinks it's going to make him start forgetting stuff again he remembers everything up until laying in a chair down in the game room he doesn't even remember walking up the stairs and sitting down in the living room which yeah. is scary because that's where he passed out so um it's just like helping him orient. I sat with him for about an hour yesterday and went over everything with him and let him understand what happened. And, you know, he's just very grateful to God right now that he's alive. He just was like, I keep catching him praying and just telling God how thankful he is. And um, it's just been a really emotional time for us. Um, we definitely, like I said, need to get some therapy, I think, for all of us, most definitely Braylon, um, because this was hard. But I'm, I'm actually kind of happy that he didn't like remember a lot of it because it's really traumatic and mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of us even you guys are more traumatized than he is luckily he didn't feel it and when he looked like he was in pain he wasn't and when he looked like he was freezing in this arctic sun he wasn't and he's just like feeling so much better so we're very thankful very blessed um it's like we're just happy that you know he's here that's the main thing and he's doing that so much is, better. That so is it, man. goal plan is as long as we can get this tachycardia under control and he doesn't get shocked or have any other arrhythmias before tomorrow, then we can go home, which is scary enough because this is like a silent battle that we're dealing with where we can't monitor it as closely as they can here in the hospital. And unfortunately this device isn't going to like track his heartbeats and it's not going to pace him. So it's only gonna shock him if his heart starts shaking and stops again. Um, which is good, but also at the same time kind of scary for us as parents because we have to watch him like a hawk to make sure that he's not in a corner of the house or using the bathroom or anything that could be It ain't even really that, babe. It's just, you know, being, being on top of him about taking his meds. That's which I know it. we can do and that. And we're going to always do that. We've been doing that, so it's just... Proper preparation prevents a poor performance. Exactly. Feel, and, so. and I feel like, you know, we've been doing that. And I have faith in what we do, so. Yeah, me too, babe. You know. You got the Caden face today. Let me I know guess. In the comments if you think he looks like Caden a lot. <laughs> I guess. Because Caden looks like you, but. Um, we don't want to keep you guys too long. We just want to make sure we're updating you as we know. We're a little less nervous now, if you can tell. Um, trying to give better updates, just even for our own knowledge to remember, like, that this is what's happening and this is what went on. And, like, in case it happens again, we... We understand, but we pray to God it don't happen again. I'll tell you yeah. that. It's not going to happen again. Yeah. 
no. kind of like it's trauma, not trauma you know based. regardless Braylon was gonna have to go through this mm -hmm. not situation but well, he was gonna have to go know. through this surgery because I want to let you guys know we just no updated what. you on yeah. Braylon's health and we told you that he went and he was wearing a Holter monitor and I don't think we ever made the update video because it was all good news but on November 22nd he went in and he wore a Holter monitor for seven days and the seven days Braylon pushed that button 50 times and he told the cardiologist, I don't feel good. I think there's something going on with my heart. And the cardiologist assured us that there was absolutely nothing wrong and that his heart checked out all seven days. So we were thinking, oh great, this medication's controlling it. He doesn't even need an ICD. He doesn't even need surgery. So why would we think as parents that we needed to do anything if our, cardi if our doctor's telling us absolutely nothing's wrong? Well, we so. knew he was gonna need this surgery though from the start. We knew that he was not going to ever get around this, no shortcut around this. We knew it in the back of our head, but medical professionals weren't suggesting it and they weren't t advocating for us to Just because he was so young, but now, you know, he got the surgery. We thank God, the science, God, the medicine. God is what saved And everything. Him. Yes, not everything. Pill, not anything, but God. And God, and God prayer. is God is the mind of everybody. And the staff here that yes. their hands were guided and they were able to keep him back to life. And of course, our CPR. Yes. But yeah. Anyways, we don't want to go down a rabbit hole of misery because God turned this into a victory, even in our time of struggle and pain. But um, we wanted to update and let you guys know that everything's going really well. And um, despite these little minor heals, but I know if God can bring my son back to life, then he can most certainly heal his heartbeat. So this is the least, littlest hurdle we have to get over right now. Yeah, and I believe it's dehydration. Us. But guys, we thank you for tuning in. We thank you for watching us. Thank you for praying for our family. Yes. Uh, thank you for just being here for us through this hard, rough time. And uh, we're gonna keep you guys updated on this whole process. Yes. Day by day. Uh, and let you guys know and the journey on the way home. This is basically the journey home. So Yeah, hopefully tomorrow we will be leaving and Braylon can be reunited with his brothers again and we can just live our normal life and give Braylon the closest to normal life that we possibly can. If you guys have any ideas or if you guys have any kids that have been through this, what do you do to help them feel like normal and feel comfortable and make sure that they don't feel left out or like they're different? Um, we're, we're open in all ears. We have a big trip planned in March for him and his brothers. We're going to go on a cruise, which is going to be nice, but like... We'll let you guys know when that time comes. Mm -hmm. But we, we told Braylon early, we were going to keep it a surprise, but we wanted him to have something to fight for to get out of here and say, oh, I got things to look forward to. So, yeah, we love you guys, and we will talk to you probably tomorrow. I'll uh, we'll update if anything immediate happens and ask for prayer if we need it. But I think we're good right now. And I just want to thank you guys so much. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you later. I am headed to get Braylon some. Um, he, like, is having a hard time eating the hospital food. He thinks the hospital food is trash. But you know how it is. He's like, the pizza has no grease on it. And there's no sauce. And... So yeah, I'm going down to get him some Uber, but I got him a Slurpee. Hopefully he can get all the way down, but it looks like we have some stops on the way. We're all the way up on the top floor, so. Oh, like I just got into a freaking five minute argument with the Uber driver because he said that I told him, I think it's just a language barrier. Anyway, he's pulling up here now. And I don't know, I'm just, just trying to figure out how to tell him where to go. I think this is him, yeah. Here we go. He looks nice, but we were definitely both confused. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Over there, you were over there. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, we've been here like seven days, so I'm so ready to go. Next time when you put it, put in the children. Children hospital. Yeah. See. Sunrise Children Hospital and the others, oh. the children, but the emergency. Not the emergency. Okay. No. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. That's why I'll be in the emergency. Yes. All right. I'm sorry about that. No, don't worry at all. It's not your fault. Thank you. 
Okay, so at least that beef is squashed. Now hopefully they don't make me go through all this damn emergency. I've already done this 18 times. Uh, no, I've been here for like seven days, but. Oh, you're picking up food? Well, I'm taking it. I just got it from the Uber driver. Oh, okay. All right, so you already got your passport today? Yeah, I think okay. so. I've just been staying here overnight for like seven days. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank God I have too much shit in my hands, guys. This is so sad. And oh, thank God I caught the elevator because it takes forever. Slurpee on my neck. <sighs> Why I'm trying to film this, I don't know. You guys are probably like, this girl thinks she's superwoman. I'm just so glad I caught the elevator. That couldn't have been much better time. Sometimes it takes like 15 minutes to catch it. Braylon's gonna be so happy I got him a Slurpee. I know that your kid is starting to feel better when he wants gas station food instead of hospital food. Okay, now I got a better grip on everything. But um, pretty much today, Braylon got up and walked. He did go high in the blood uh, pulse again. He was up at like 160 again, but they still walked him a few times. But now he's sitting down playing the video game and he's on the heart monitor and his heart rhythm is going a little wonky. It's like um, going real low and then real high and then real low and then real high. So he's stable, but they want to do another EKG because that's the, reason, that's the reason why we skipped the pacemaker is because we felt like his rhythm was intact. But now right before he's about to go home, we're getting some irregular arrhythmias. So that's a little update. So Braylon got this blue Slurpee. That's his favorite color. I got the Coke one. It's looking a little frostbitten, so I'm hoping that it is good. And then I got us some taquitos. Braylon said he didn't want one, but I got two because, you know, everybody always says they don't want something until it's in their face and then they want it. Then I got us some. Got Braylon some M&M's. I got me some M&M's. Popcorn. Bunions, gummies. These are some of our usual snacks that we eat around the house. Salt and vinegar chips, pistachios. This is some of Braylon's favorite beef jerky. So, got you some beef jerky too, baby. So, yeah. yeah, so I think it's really good that he's playing the game and that they're watching his heart rate and stuff because this is kind of what he was doing before. Um, he went into cardiac arrest that he can remember. So I think it's good he's playing so they can kind of monitor his heart rhythm while he's on this, um, even though it's kind of going weird. So definitely want you to keep playing the game, Braylon, so when they come in here to do the thing, they can see how your heart reacts. Okay, so they're thinking that it might be because the lead was on incorrectly. Like, it, you know, after you have these leads on for a while, they start to fall off and stuff. So she replaced the leads and now his heart's not doing that funky little arrhythmia anymore but also his magnesium was a little bit low so they gave him some um they're giving him some mag to go through his iv um and then he's gonna eat he needs to um use the bathroom before they want to let him go just to make sure everything is like flowing correctly and we're waiting on dad so that's kind of where we're at braylon absolutely hates milk and magnesia he just anything chalky or like milky he cannot so he almost like gagged and I freaked out so I like dumped this bucket and gave him a bucket so he could peek in if he needs to but hopefully no more gag reflex huh yeah you feeling okay okay good so yeah, we're just waiting on dad to get here and then hopefully he doesn't have any more arrhythmia so that we can leave. to drop off some of um, Braylon's scripts and they do not have them available so a lot of them are over the counter I'm gonna just see if I can find them here because I don't want him to miss a dose um, multivitamin 
see, I need a magnesium. Buy one, get one free, so you can't go wrong with those. The coal lace is gonna be somewhere over here. And this is perfect. This is the generic docusate sodium. It's the same thing as coal lace, so we're just gonna go with that. And then the antacids, because he had a lot of blood in his stomach, so I need pepsid, which is also famotidine. So I'm thinking acid reducer, what is this? Famotidine, famotidine 20 milligrams. Okay, so yeah, they had everything in here, perfect. This should at least hold him over until the morning. They said nothing will be ready until midday tomorrow. I'm gonna get him some lip stuff too, because his lips are dry, look at me. My lips are dry too. Oh, you took the wires home. <laughs> Good job, sweet boy. Watch that lake pop up his throat. Good job. Marco and I just prayed a hedge of protection over our baby right. while we just got yeah. out of this car because this is the place where everything happened and we were just praising God for, for a place of tragedy that Lord made into a place of victory and how we can just continuously praise him and give him all the glory and all the honor for our baby boy. Use the enemy as your footstool, Braylon. This is exactly where your body laid when we performed all of the life-saving measures on you. And look, you walk right back into your house without a worry in the world because God got you on the seventh day. And God says that seven is a number of completion, Braylon. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Probably feel good to be back in your house. A new something. He has a new little buddy in him right now. Oh, who's that? Um, that's nothing. He can throw that one off. But he has a new little buddy in his uh in his chest over here, and I don't want you to touch it, okay? Okay. Because he he got to heal up first. Okay. <laughs> can you play the game with me? You can. Can? Yeah. He can play the game with me. He can. He can. Okay. Let's go play. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you go, Mom. I know, I haven't seen you either. I love you. I freaking miss you, buddy. You're so stinkum cute. I love you. I miss you a long time ago. I miss you such a long time ago, honey. You're such a good boy. I, I miss Byron a long time ago. No, yeah, true. Yeah. I know. Thank you, Jesus. Kaden. Bubby's here. That means Brian is never going to go to the hospital? Never again. <laughs> he doesn't need to ever again. Wait, wait, let's get the family a hug. Okay. Hey, Grandma, let's come, come and get a hug. This is real life. Okay. We're so blessed. Look at my baby. Oh, my goodness. He's so happy. B. 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 What do you think yeah. about Braylon, Kaden? He's so happy. You can tell how happy he is. I love Braylon. He's amazing, dude. Fire! 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 What would you do without me? I don't know, babe, but I need you right now. These braids hurt. I can't do no braids, ever. Marco just made his mom do this so he could come looking presentable to the hospital. And he's like begging me to take it out, so. Um, Braylon's over here drinking lots of electrolytes with his 
What is that called, baby? Pedialyte? He took his medicine for tonight, so he doesn't have to take any more medicine until tomorrow. Um, we're all just chilling in here. Kaden has, like, turned into a whole new baby. What did you guys do with my baby, huh? Look at him. He's a little strong little tank now. All right, Look, he likes... What are you Whoa. giving him? This is water. Pellegrino. Sparkling water? Hi! Mark Cannon, what do you want to say? Do you want to watch the Wednesday movie? <laughs> well, why don't you tell everyone who is your girlfriend going to be when you get older? It's going to be Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just hanging out with the family. Yeah. yeah. Feels good, and it's so dark, babe. I'm doing yeah. this while it's dark. So we'll talk to you guys in the morning. Um, it's just a good day. We're home. Baby, oh my God, your baby! It's about time. We all need like a reset. So tomorrow's gonna be all about a reset. Yes, yeah, completely reset. Everybody gotta get in order. Everybody, Everybody get... gotta get in the tub. Yes, showers, everything, hair done. Oh my God, haircuts, <laughs> hair done, everything. Yes. Sorry, we're watching Wednesday. We'll see you guys tomorrow.